My name is Tom Atkinson, and this is the GBC for Brick Fair Virginia 2018. And we're going to show you a quick take on all the modules and maybe spend a little more detail on some new ones. So we're going to start off with uh, the, my black module, which holds a lot of balls um, and can spit them out one at a time. And then we go in into a, a small disc that brings the, a small wheel, as we call it, that brings the balls up one at a time. And from there we go into a bigger wheel, which is actually just the thing that loads it into a version of Akiyuki's forks. Um, this is always an, a really cool module to watch um, and see how the balls travel up it. It just seems like they're kind of floating. Out of that we go into uh, another wheel. Uh, and this one is also used as a loader to the more interesting part of the module. Uh, which is a series of the up and down steps to bring the balls up and then down a, a, a set of three ramps which brings you to the next module and for those of you guys out there trying to count module times i say module good luck <laughs> uh, from there we move into um, a module that uh, hasn't been seen for a little while this is a knee lug member uh, who brought this with a, a stepper and lots of gears going on. Um, he also has his own uh, little emergency stash of balls under there that he can use to test it. Now, out of there, we go into uh, this year's Brick World Workshop module, uh, the ball pump. This is a different version of it, of course, not the colors that Brick World did. And now there we go into another Brick World module from years ago. Nothing too new there. Out of that, we go into, uh, this is an Akiyuki-based module with the three-prong picky eater, as, we, as it's been called. Uh, this is an interesting mechanism that the three prongs pick up the balls, and then uh, the, as they arrive at the top, they get pressed by this L piece here, which opens up the fork and lets the ball drop out. From there, we move into a, a simple wheel module uh, that then picks the balls up and drops them into this module which has a, a bucket that fills up with balls uh, and once the it gets full the, the, the weight of the balance the weight on the top half of dumps the balls over just like that out of there we go into um, a simple three step actually that's a four step stepper <laughs> uh, that feeds into his boat that's in dry dock, as he calls it. Uh, so this, he actually raced this boat in the boat race this year uh, and had to let it dry out before we could use it as a GBC module. So um, it didn't win, but it did okay. Uh, and then we go into another uh, module, which is a three-stage stepper. Uh, and then we go into a module which has a stepper feeding in to a series of these motorcycle wheels um, that bring the balls up one at a time, and then, as you can see, they're rotating alternately. Uh, that's to make the, the gearing a little simpler. Now, from there, that goes into um, our entranceway. There's a big, tall conveyor and goes up over a, a ramp, and this particular type of one uh, out the other end, it just drops straight down uh, into this thing that catches the ball, and this uses up a lot of the energy by bouncing in there a couple of times before it rolls out. Uh, from there, we go into Stewart's NXT train, uh, which is a very interesting concept. It has a, an NXT on the train and an NXT on the load station. And the load station detects the train, knows when to load, uh, loads a certain number of rotations to put in balls, and then the, tells the, the NXT on the train to go and the NXT gets down to the other end and knows, okay, I'm at the other end. Now i got to dump and turn around and go back. It's uh, a smart train. It is a smart train. <laughs> Smarter than most. Uh, from there, we go into uh, a, a spiral module. This is based on an Akiyuki concept of um, the spiral stationary and a, a set of beams rotating to bring it up, the spiral. Um, from there, we go into a module that has been around for a little while. This idea is, is always fun to watch when you got a bunch of balls in it. 
um, as a conveyor brings it up and then they zigzag down a, a whole bunch of ramps. Um, <clears throat> after the ramps, which is always cool to watch, we go into a, a module which um, is effectively a, a splitter. And so the balls roll into it and then the way this is arranged, so every other arm will dump the ball on, on one side or the other. And uh, it's, an, it's been very effective at splitting the ball into two paths. And you can see from the output of this that goes into this year's Brick Fair workshop module. Uh, and uh, contrary to Brick World's modules, people have really gone nuts making these modules unique. And if you look, there's very few that are not modified. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't know why. <laughs> Just people went nuts here with they've it. Heard, they've heard you telling people for years that you need to decorate your modules more. I, I, okay, <laughs> I'll take that. Um, but as you can see, there's a, people put all sorts of interesting things on there. Um, well, there's somewhere down there, uh, there's a Duplo brick <laughs> sitting on a module. We got a module that was modified to fit onto a boat in here. Uh, we got a module that's on fire. Yeah, so it, it's kind of cool what, what people have done with all of these, and, it, and it, it, it's nice to see. Uh, this is, there was a total of, the, there were two workshops here um, with a total of, I think, just shy of 70 modules were made. Um, and a good amount of them have made it to the table with modifications, which is cool. So lots of, lots of different things on here. Some of them are like clearly themed and some of them are just, okay, those are some interesting parts to put on a module. I like the medieval um, one. Yeah, medieval, we got princesses, we got dinosaurs, we got frogs, we got um, things I don't even know how to describe. <laughs> <laughs> lots, of, lots of cool colors. And once um, these two streams of workshop modules combine back together again into uh, one of Stuart's modules that uh, is a stepper but also can hold a lot of balls, we use these modules, we kind of call them like resync modules because they, they can take a lot in, they can hold a lot, and they let them out one at a time, resync to the roughly the one ball per second. From there, we go into a, um, a Archimedes screw um, and I know uh, talking to the builder, he was having some issues with this. Uh, it seems like some balls are still getting up it, but it's definitely acting a little weird. I'm sure next time we see that, it will be vastly improved because he's just that kind of guy. <laughs> he's just always improving. <laughs> uh, from there, we go into this. Uh, we've seen this before. Um, and this is, again, this is a module that has improved over time. It's a simple ramp with a conveyor that I mean, with a, uh, an output ramp with a jump. Um, and if you remember from uh, a few videos or ago, this used to jump into a box that he had a little secret compartment and used to <laughs> steal my ball, so. Don't tell me he got rid of the secret ball stealer. Well, apparently uh, he's been called out on it enough. He just, <laughs> I don't know, I, now I'm suspicious that there isn't some other method he's hiding balls somewhere. Uh, from there, there's a, there's a sweeper that he's done that's lit up, and we have a, I don't think I've seen that one lit up at night yet, but we'll see that tonight later. Um, then we have a, a simple conveyor that dumps into um, yet another of this year's Brick Fair workshop modules. Uh, from there, we got a this year's Brick World workshop module. And from there, we go into a module which is definitely has a, a symbol of um, I think I believe it's a breast cancer awareness, uh, which is, you know, that's definitely a, a different kind of thing to put into a module, and, and I appreciate the variety, um, which is cool. The output of this goes into an, another conveyor. This is kind of built in a, in a solid way. The conveyor is, you know, well protected, not out in the open, um, with a, a nice curved um, tube coming out of it to take the energy up uh, and it dumps it into a module which is based on a, a workshop module from Brickworld years ago 
Uh, that feeds into a module which is an interesting one. Yeah, it kind of is... it shoots the balls up the inside of this curve. Um, and I know, you know, when this thing, when we first showed up with this thing, it was flinging as many balls as it got on to the next module. <laughs> Um, but he managed to tweak it, and he's added adjustability to the actual angle that the thing sits at, which has made it a lot more reliable and able to keep most of the balls in. Yeah, this thing's crazy. So I think if you so that that clicking sound, you see me pick this up. There's the the clicking sound there is for coming from a spring, and then the ball in there, and it springs it and just throws it right along the arch onto right the other around. side. Boom. Yep. Okay. And then once it gets to the other side, you got all this energy. So you notice there's a, a lever here that gets hit by every ball. I'm not even sure your camera is going to be able to pick those up, but um, and so that's using up a lot of the energy. So then it it just rolls out nicely onto the next module. Um, from there we go into a stepper module, which has been decorated very nicely. Ah, there was one that kind of missed, but it stayed on the table. It didn't go flying across the very room. <laughs> Uh, from there, we move on to a wheel, and this is a different take on a wheel. Uh, very colorful um, and also brick built rather than technic built, which most of them have been. So it works pretty well. I haven't seen any issues with it. Um, the output Ladies of that, move on to um, a simple conveyor, which feeds into a zigzag pattern. So the balls roll down out of that. And again, that's use up the energy and move on to the next module. Um, from there, we go into a, a more complicated stepper. There's three steps. Uh, it's very colorful. The purple and white, I feel like, with the yellow. Yeah, it's an it's interesting colorization. And another interesting thing you should look at is this. These are those angled wing pieces um, used as a slope, set on the side and, a, and used as snot. Um, it's, I don't think I've seen this particular way of having a ramp before. Yeah. So there's always something new, you know. Um, uh, the next module is a simple conveyor using the old style chain. Um, it's just doing pretty good. And that dumps into um, a stepper. This is loosely based on an Akiyuki design. Um, in some of these you got to get, you got to catch the, uh, the, t the, um, the cards and some of the information, and the, we'll, there's a couple more we'll look at later that are, are pretty funny. Um, they, after we move up the stepper, we have a workshop module from a couple years ago for Brick World, and then we move into another um, zigzag module again based on the Akiyuki design. Um, and then after that, we move into a, a ball pump, and, and I was looking closely at this before, and I don't think I've actually ever seen a ball pump done quite like this. The actual thing that's at the bottom pushing the balls up is a round, is a round two by two on its side, and that really helps prevent jams. I mean, a typical ball pump uses a lot of square parts, and you know, ball square, it, something's going to find a way to jam, but round on round is a whole lot less likely. And while I have not been standing in front of this thing all day, I don't know that it's had any problems at all. So after it, the ball goes down to its squigglies to get onto the next module, which is a, a, a simple conveyor up. And then at the top, there's a, a switch. So there are two paths to follow. One is just a quick ramp down, and the other goes through a series of, of weighted um, cups, I guess, um, that. When the ball goes in it, it weighs it and goes on to the next one and then drops down. I love those. It's like the, the power miner's uh, drill yeah, bit drill. type of piece. Yeah, it's a drill bit piece, which apparently can cup a ball with very nicely. You know? so, uh, from there, we move into a uh, larger conveyor. This is like a double conveyor. So it, it moves slow, but can still move the rate of one ball per second or more. I'm sure that can handle a lot more. Um, after that, we go into another workshop module from brick world and then to a simpler stepper uh, that has the little tiny steps after that we go into a module that's uh, a wheel and this is a more typical kind of wheel made out of technic um, after that we go into a, a, a module that of course you got to love the color um, that uses this 
the wheel um, and uses the, the fact that it's the three spokes are acting as the, the lift mechanism. Um, and it's just, you know, lime. Lime is not a very common color, but right. it's always good to have a different kind of module. It's bright and cheerful. Yeah, stands out a little bit. From there, we go into a module that has, is just a, it's a simple conveyor. Um, and I see, I haven't really looked closely at this one. I see that the motor's in the, underneath the conveyor and that the, there's axle going underneath. So the mechanism's a little more complicated than you might appear first look. The output of that goes to um, a spiral. This is loosely based on, on my design. This one's done by Mr. Red. Um, and this Archimedes screw. Uh, it uh, picks up, you know, anywhere from three to five or six balls in one rotation and brings them up to the top. From there, we roll on to a module that's just simple conveyor. Out of that, we go into a module that has, it's a wheel. Um, this also has built in the ability to, for it to not jam because of the gears in there that kind of help it something gives rather than something breaking. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's always good. Yes, definitely better to, you know, make something stop and spin in place than break. Um, so there we go into another stepper, another wheel that has the same kind of mechanism to prevent jams. Um, after that, we go into, uh-oh. I'm going to guess that's not supposed to be happening. I think you're right. Um, so after that, we go into a broken module. That we'll just, let Mr. Red take a look at that. <laughs> so after the um, conveyor, <laughs> after the conveyor that um, is currently broken, it goes up to the top, and then there's a big long zigzag, uh, which is another another entertaining thing to watch. Of course, ball zigging and zagging is always fun. So after that, we go into another um, conveyor that feeds into um, Bill's tsunami, as he calls it. Uh, and this has the uh, stationary set of links riding on top of uh, links underneath that have a lump every once in a while and creates a wave so the balls can follow them. From there, we go into a brick world module from clearly 2015, clearly. Uh, and then into a, a very sm simple single stepper, and then into a Brick World module from this year, or a modification of it. Another simple module from the modification of a Brick World conveyor. Uh, and then we go into another module, which is a, a, a simple conveyor. And th this one was built by a young man. And uh, it, it had some issues earlier today. It was collecting balls like crazy. And we discovered one, one of the pieces was off by a stud. And once that was fixed, I, I think it's been working fine since. Great. That's what you want to hear. <laughs> that is exactly what I, and I'm sure that's what he wanted to hear yeah. too. From there, we go into um, my up and down, I don't know what I call, what do I call this thing? Uh, um, Red bridge. what I call this. I don't know. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's a ramp that just, I mean, a uh, platform. That's what it is lifting platform or something, I don't know. Forget. We have a small gray module, and then we have the flipper. This is my small flipper. And that dumps into the beginning of Ian's massively impressive roller coaster. Uh, this, um, you guys did a video on this last year. Um, at that time, he had just kind of got it mostly working, and he's had done two shows since then. Uh, and it's been working pretty good. I've seen it. I saw it screw up once um, because it's really complicated and stuff still happens. But overall, I think this has been working great all day, and it's definitely been a crowd pleaser. Uh, people wait around for that car to fill up and go on down the track. It's just one of those things. It is always impressive and fun to watch, for sure. Well, anything, any kind of <clears throat> anything where there's a car full of, balls traveling on a track. I mean, people are going to, ah, cool, how'd that do it? So after that, we go into um, a module from this year that 
here, brick fair, and we have an old brick world module. And then we move into a module that is a, has a variety of different mechanisms in it, mostly just steppers, but they're done in, in a different sort of way. I, I kind of like this module, um, and including the output agitation, which is... <laughs> From there, we go into a ball pump, uh, and this is a, kind of a long, long tube ball pump. Uh, I think it's kind of based on, um, I believe it's based on a phylo design, at least somewhat. And of course, this is not currently working. We have a conveyor that's not conveying Pretty good things. Track. I turned it off and on and fixed it. <laughs> so that's the classic fix there. It even works on GBC? It does. You know, I, the kicking thing doesn't really work or <laughs> slapping a thing doesn't really work, but turning it on and off seems to do it sometimes. So there seems to be a lot of balls in that input, so it'll, it'll eventually clear out. Uh, from there, we move into a module, and this is this style of module is not uh, very common in the U.S. I've seen a lot of these in the European um, designs, and that's where there's some fingers coming through, uh, picking the balls up and kind of scooping them on to the next module. Uh, from there, this this the next module is it's a bit complicated to kind of follow the path of it, uh, but basically, they come in and they go up a ball pump, and then they get shot at this target and they most of them will just hit that and go on but if it happens to miss or short shoot there's a whole nother conveyor to bring the balls back to try again okay. basically um, so it's and it's also slightly decorated with the the workers and stuff so it's an interesting module <clears throat> from there we go on to um, and here he is going to prove me wrong about these flipping fingers. Here's another module with <laughs> fingers that are flipping that, that pass the balls along in several stages to get on to the next module. And this next brown module is pneumatic. And all the pneumatic, the pneumatic pump and all the controls are out here. You can see this beam going back and forth is actually running the pneumatic switch at the same time that the pneumatic pumps down here pressurizing it. Um, all the the stepper part of it is all buried inside, run by pneumatics. So I I love this module because it's pneumatic and pneumatics are cool. Uh, from there we go into this is a new module for this year. Um, it's a little shooter. It's kind of the miniaturized version of that big arc we saw back there, where he's shooting the balls up and they're following the path of the arc to dump it into the next module. From there, we go into um, a ball pump, which is, um, you know, pushes the balls up the pump, moves it on to the next one. Uh, this is uh, another stepper, which is loosely based on this year's uh, Brick Fair workshop module. From there, we go into a, a wheel. This is a nice, small, compact wheel, which is Technic built. Uh, this is a pretty neat design. It's been working pretty good, as far as I know. Uh, from there, we go to a simple pusher, uh, and this is <clears throat> kind of a miniaturized version of um, one of my pushers that I have. Um, after that, we go into this, a different way of doing a, um, a scoop, you know, a flipper kind of module using the new internal teeth curved um, Technic part. Um, and a lot of us GBCers are scrambling to find cool and new ways to use this part. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a nice, elegant, been working very well uh, solution. Uh, from there, we move into a module which is a stepper. I had to check. Um, you have to read the card on it. Puzzles, and it, the module is called Jigsaw. So it's a jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw puzzle. Although I was noticing before that that's got to be one of the simplest puzzles I've ever seen. All the parts are square. <laughs> but hey, you, you, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> that's right. Uh, from there we go. The that feeds into um, uh, a little bit of a tsunami, like Mr. Bill's, Mr. Red's. But it's uh, on a smaller scale using the, the, the older chain link. Um, and it's kind of neat how the, the balls do go up this wave. 
uh, and then they, they get dumped into the next module. The next module is actually two run off one motor, um, and it, it's a simple stepper that's just one thing going up and down to move the, pick the balls up just a little and move them on to the next ramp. From there, we go into this module, and um, this is a pretty neat one. As the There's two paths, there's two conveyors, and at the top, each one has its own path. The, the right side goes down a bunch of squigglies and goes out, or recirculates, rather. Uh, and then the left path up here uh, runs down a ramp in the back, runs down another ramp, and then runs down the side and back on to the next module. Um, and a, the next module um, is has a ball pump which feeds into a ramp and a pair of the um, the, the one-piece treads, uh, which I always said, oh, those are terrible. You can't make a good GBC with those. And, of course, I've been proven wrong a couple times, and this <laughs> is a great example of that. Now, this next module is very interesting uh, because, as far as I know, this is the first time anybody has ever done this. This is a, a, a gravity-powered module. Um, it's, it uses a clock mechanism and some, a pair of weights, uh, and the whole thing is run by gravity, and it's basically running a, a simple conveyor using this gravity powered. He does have weights in here, and um, this is still in prototype stage. Can, is it safe to say that? It is definitely in prototype stage. It is nowhere near complete. <laughs> I'm going to have to spend at least 100 more dollars on BrickLink before it's done. Still some work in progress, but it's looking good so far. I like the idea you've got going on here. It's an awesome idea. I, I, w I was going to say I wish I could thought of it too, but I had thought of it. I just didn't complete anything. So he's the first one to do this and get it out in the world. And it's, a, it's an awesome implementation. At this point, I, I think one of the, the big drawbacks he has is it has to be reset every four minutes, right? 100 resets. 100 resets so far today? Okay, so that gives you some. Somebody can do the math and <laughs> tell you. Um, so, but it, I think it's an awesome thing, and I, I really am looking forward to see where, where this goes in f future events. So, I know it's gonna, it's gonna wow us further. Uh, <clears throat> Gravity powered GBC, how do you like that, huh? In the times we live in, 2018, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's, it's, it's power efficient, you know? We don't, it uses human power to crank it up. No electricity wasted. <laughs> So, and, it, and as I was telling him earlier, if we lost power, his module would be the only one running. So, <laughs> From there, we go into um, a simple small stepper with a bunch of little steps. Um, and out of that, we go into the, um, Ian's wind machine, which blows the balls up a slight ramp. Um, and it's also... as as a public, you get a little extra breeze out there, which is always a good thing. Um, from there, we the balls roll into a, a simple wheel, um, a Technic built wheel. They roll on up, and then they go into um, this module here, which has a, a basically this couple of steps here is just getting the timing of the balls right, loads it onto this large wheel, um, and, and swings it on up. And as they reach the top and they start the, we the wheel starts sloping back down, they roll out into the next module. Wow, this is this is fantastic to watch because you look at the timing there and you always think it's going to miss it, but then it just l lands right on perfectly. <laughs> well, if you notice, he's got this, this um, axle out here that drives a differential, and this is allows him to adjust the timing between when the ball rolls off of there and when this comes up, so okay. it can be tweaked. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is the whole angle of this thing can be adjusted so that you can get the angle just right so it's going to roll off in the right spot. Mm -hmm. And so he's uh, spent some time. Uh, this is Ian's module, a roller coaster guy. Um, and so he clearly spent some time trying to figure out how to make this work in the wacky environment with tables that aren't always straight or whatever, building adjustability, which is an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. um, on to the next module, which is, this is a module that was built in two hours at a show by a guy and has been modified and now 
when it showed up here, it was kind of mutilated, so it had to get put back together again. So this has become the, the, the module that's been hacked together okay. and repaired and hacked. and So it's a good little filler because it's small. Uh, then we have an up and down, and then after that it goes into a small ball pump, and that, which was a uh, version of this year's Brick World Workshop module. After that we go into my bridge, which we've seen this before. It's only broken once today that I know of. I was told it was broken by uh, somebody came running over. Your bridge broke again. No, somebody ran under it and smashed into it, and that broke it. But oh. it was really just a matter of readjusting things. Um, so it, this bridge is eventually going to get replaced. And don't be quoting me on that later, okay? All of you guys. Yeah. You know they hold it to you. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> We'll talk some more about that as we get <laughs> further along. After that, we go into a, um, a this is a module that's based on uh, the design that ended up being this year's Brick Fair module. After that, this, this is an interesting one. Um, the balls go up a conveyor and they go down this, they go down into the thing and you can see it from the front. You can't really see it from the back where we are, but the balls kind of work their way through the whole thing and then come out the back and go down a ramp and go on to the next module. It's got an awful lot of moving parts, an awful lot of gears, a lot of structure. It's been working great. I haven't seen a problem with this thing all day. So um, it's, it's cool. It's definitely a yeah, new module. With all these different gears and the moving parts here, yeah. you would think something would go wrong. Right. Especially... Um, yeah, so much moving stuff, and there's a lot of friction in here too. It's when you, whenever you have lots of bricks sliding next to each other, it's asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. And this is just engineered and designed in such a way that it's been working fine. Out of the output of this, we go into um, a couple of theme modules, and you can definitely tell from the front what the themes are. <laughs> one's a soda machine, and one's a popcorn machine. Um, so, and they're getting a little backed up. I can see, we need to poke here. Um, so I love these modules. The, the themed idea is really mm -hmm. neat. The one drawback, the one thing I have to, my one complaint about these modules is they run a little slow. Um, and that's why they're getting a little backed up. They do okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They just need to be re-geared or something. After that, uh, we come out and go into my pneumatic module. Um, this one we've seen a bunch of times. Uh, I think at, at the last show I did, which was Brick World Chicago, I r had to replace the piston and a couple other little parts. And so it's working very well at this show. So check on us in a couple shows. We'll see. <laughs> now that we get into um, my favorite snail module. <laughs> this is based on a, an early Brick World workshop module um, that's been decorated to be a snail. And we go into a Brick World pump from this year and a different Brick World module after that. And then a simple up and down, which is based loosely on a design that I did, um, which is a, just a small 10 by 10. After that, we go into a, another decorated module. This is uh, the tree, which is basically a ramp. And as I understand it, she learned how to do ramps from that early Brick World design and just extended it and decorated it. And uh, it's a very beautiful thing. And it's also got snails all over it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> From there, we move into um, uh, another uh, <laughs> couple of stepper modules. And, you know, some of these characters are now making some, some kind of a, I don't know, a comeback. So it's a renaissance of Galador Brick Fair this year. It sure <laughs> is. And so you know, the, the Galador characters had to come out and, and make a showing. Um, it's, it's fun to see. I forget what they look like, and I yeah. was like, oh, yeah, now I remember. I should mention right now, for people who have no clue what those are and what they're looking at, we have another video from Brick Fair that we'll be putting up on the channel that, with all the Galador products and explaining what that is. So if you're wondering what in the world did LEGO think when they did that, uh, make sure to check that other video out. And we, we will continue to wonder what was LEGO <laughs> thinking. Hey, you know, you can't get better without making mistakes. So. Right. Galador is generally considered a mistake. 
but they learned. They, you know, they moved on. All right, from there, there's a sweeper and then another uh, three-step stepper motor that's this year's workshop. And we go into um, another workshop module from Brick World. And now we start the interesting stuff by Laurie. Uh, this is where I become speechless sometimes. <laughs> so this is um, this this is the get the it's the cardigan lift, uh, and the the credits are there on on the card as to who's where the design came from. So he dumps those balls into this adjustable output, which so that can feed it into things that. This next part of this module splits the balls up into two paths, each one to a shooter, and the shooters aim up at this net, catch the balls. I love the double shooter down here. Yeah, it's a really cool thing, and it's the whole thing with the shooters and the tower and everything is, is themed, superhero themed, and there's a lot of characters floating around there. Um, this module was seen at, uh, I believe, at New Jersey last year, and the, this was at the builder's first show. So he had, um, you know, learned a few things from that show, like, you know, maybe a bunch of studs on each floor collects a lot of balls, and so he replaced them all with tile, and now it's a lot cleaner. So, and he also added some more things to it to make it cool. Uh, from there, we go into um, a simple wheel, again, a, a technique-based wheel to spin the balls up. Uh, after that, we go into a ball pump, which pumps the balls into uh, this bowl that is designed to uh, give the kids a place to return balls. Um, and he's put this try sign in front of it to kind of indicate what it's for um, and runs that thing on... Uh, the, the mechanism for doing that is really kind of clever down here. Yeah. Um, it's, it's uh, what's the term? I can't think of the term for that type of mechanism. Drawing a blank, folks. It happens at the end of the day. <laughs> That's true. Well, um, excuse this one. Okay. <laughs> It'll come to me, you know, 27 modules down Just the line. Yell it out whenever you think of it. All right, all right, I will. Uh, from there, they roll out the back and into a simple conveyor, which then moves on to a ball pump. Uh, that's that definitely this year's workshop module from Brick World. And now we got a miniature golf course. Uh, and this, this is, uh, believe it or not, each hole is a separate module. Uh, and he very carefully designed it so that it can be wrapped into a small package, all nine holes. And... Um, each one has a unique theme to it, uh, and from what I've been told, the builder is actually got plans to add some more holes. Really? Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little while before we actually see them, but he's he's got plans. Um, he's basically looking for donations to continue. <laughs> but so, at any rate, um, each one of these is is a lot of fun. Um, the mechanism to to launch the balls are pretty much all the same for every one but each of the greens is a little different and and if you've ever played miniature golf you should recognize some of these things um and the tower bridge in miniaturized just i i just go gaga over that you know? um, and after the the last hole and some swooping under we have a bridge and down and around and the last hole down the long shoot for the windmill and then that moves on to the next module. And the next module is the beginning of a very colorful collection of the steppers that were loosely based on this year's workshop module. Um, and I, you know, there's colors here that you generally don't see any kind of technic things done in. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that he was able to get enough of these colors to, with enough brick variety to make a full module out of it is, is pretty impressive. Um, so after this collection of beautiful modules, we go into another wheel, another Technic wheel. And now we get to this module here, which um, I, I guess I'm kind of embarrassed about because this is his recreation of my <clears throat> prototype. Um, 
And so he made his from basically like a couple of frames from one of your guys' videos. And the, originally when he showed it to me, he had pretty much copied it perfectly. The one thing he didn't quite get perfect was the agitator underneath okay. in the front because that we didn't pick that module up and flip it over or anything. <laughs> And he did a better job. <laughs> he improved on your prototype. That's, right. that's what. That's the point. Yeah. So, and since then, he's even um, made it even better with the gear train and so on and so forth. Is it's a much tighter, more solid thing. This is what I needed to do several years ago. Okay. So, somebody got tired of waiting. Uh, I'm just glad we were able to inspire that improvement there. I think that's really what we need to see here. Yeah, well, you know, the uh, I, I've been, well, never mind, we'll move on. So from, from there we go into a three-step stepper that feeds into um, this complicated machine, which is really, it's a series of flippers to bring the balls up in a zigzag fashion all the way to the top. And once they get to the top, they have a, they go one of two ways. And it can be a little hard to see it. No, it's actually, it's four ways, isn't it? No, three. There's a lot of flex tube here. <laughs> yeah, it's three ways. Um, so there are three separate paths for the balls to go back down. There are four? There are four. Okay. Oh, right. The one that drops straight down. Okay. So there are four separate paths. Uh, and it's pretty neat. This, um, I remember when he was setting this up, it takes a little tweaking to get it especially the ones that spiral down to get it angled right and everything so the balls aren't flying off. Um, it still leaks a little, but it works pretty good overall. All four paths come back together and feed into the next module, of course. After that, we got a, a simple conveyor based on a Brick World Workshop module and then feeds into a pump that's based on this year's Workshop module. After that, we feed into this amazing machine that spells out words in soccer balls. Um, and I must note that if you remember about 10 minutes ago, I said this is the part where I get kind of, yeah, goo goo over. Uh, we're still working on these. All, we're almost done with that section. This, is, this machine was also one of his earlier machines that he made, and he's made some improvements on it. Um, but this, this work, all the way from back, way back then, is all the work of one Laurie, who you guys did an interview with yes. separately. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing stuff. So out of this, uh, and this is really run by some intelligence that's putting the balls in the right place at the right time. Excuse me. Um, after that, we go on to... And he has this set up so that this mechanism here, which is not currently in use, um, will load the truck with balls and bring it back to the beginning of his loop um, for the purposes of running glow-in-the-dark balls during World of Lights, um, which is just awesome. It's something that uh, a number of us have been dreaming and talking about for years, and he just went and did it. So, again... It's crazy, like, crazy stuff. Crazy man. Just trumped by somebody on the ball instead of me <laughs> so but right now it's set up to just skip over that section and pass the balls all along and into another triple stepper and then another single stepper another single stepper and then a ball pump based on this year's brick world design uh, after that we get this big long ramp in very shocking orange and blue I like the colors on this one yeah um, and, the, and the cool thing about this is how he uses all that energy up is by the series of slightly angled things and the ball's just wrapped down. I'm sure you get some good audio on that. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you've been here, I've been hearing this all day long, click, yeah. click, click, click. And it's not obnoxious, it's click, 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 it's nice and mellow. After we roll out of that, we roll into um, a, a ball pump. Um, and I understand this ball pump's been working pretty well. I haven't been watching it closely, but this is um, a different design than what you've seen a lot of today. After that, we go into a simple conveyor, which feeds into uh, this machine that acts like a water wheel. Um, and that dumps the ball into the next module, which is uh, my version of a 
uh, corkscrew. Um, and this is the one that I tell people not to look at too long because it will mesmerize you. After the Archimedes screw, we move into my simple um, tipping ramp, which passes the balls on slowly to the next module, which is a Star Wars themed module. Um, that all done in brown, and it's hard to tell from this side, but sand. from there, you can see that it's a sand crawler. Thanks, that I had this voice in my ear. <laughs> um, from there, after we crawl in the sand, uh, we drop into my Ferris wheel, and th this has been seen a bunch of times. Are there any plans to uh, update the Ferris wheel design or make a bigger one or anything like that? Uh, no, what I would like to do is replace all the tan bricks with white ones, though. Okay. You know, I got, I got every shade of tan in there now, because uh, at one point, not too long ago, I went through and replaced all the tan, 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 white, sunlight faded bricks, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, with white ones. And because all the others had been exposed but hadn't started to turn yet, then they turned. Oh, okay. And so it, it needs to be just completely redone, because mm -hmm. it's looking pretty awful. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the wheel itself and the loading mechanism and all that stuff, uh, I'm pretty happy with. I think there's, there's definitely getting some parts in there that need replacing, um, but I want to replace all those white uh, tan bricks. <laughs> From there, we move into um, my pusher, which I like to put next to the Ferris wheel because, in my opinion, it's a rather boring module, but it's long and it gets the balls away. From there, we move into a module, and this is kind of unique. This is kind of a two brick, brick World Workshop modules combined into one. Or, or no, actually a brick, a brick World module and a Brick Fair module combined okay. into one, sorry. So this was from a couple years ago at Brick World and this is from this year's Brick Fair and just kind of squished into one module. It's a neat idea. Uh, from there we go into a simple wheel, um, a Technic built wheel. And after that we go into this large Archimedes screw, which is based on an Akiyuki design. And here's another module that's going to make a liar out of me because it's another, you know, pin, pair of set of fingers flipping up balls. What was that? That's three of them so that far, is. right? So okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to rethink that one. I got to stop saying that, don't I? Uh, after that, we go into one of Stuart's modules that uh, has three steps in it and, and holds a lot of balls in the input. Out into an orange and black simple stepper. And then we move into a module It was built by a young man that uh, he had it last year and had some problems. And this year he added an agitator um, to help. And um, he, it still needs some work, but it's been, it, it may hold up balls a little bit, but it's been working. It hasn't fallen apart or anything, which is good. After it comes out of there, it goes into um, a long conveyor with a, a long ramp. And this... The flexibility of this ramp allows us to do anything. We can circulate or so on and so forth, but it's great for going around a corner um, and leaves lots of space. Uh, and then he has a couple of the tread pieces to kind of absorb the energy at the end. Uh, and, that, and that drops into my white flipper, the simple, you know, two studs at a time flipper. That then rolls into my shooter, which we've seen 10 million times. But it's always fun to look at. Anything that shoots the balls up like that, you know, it's great. Yeah, um, it has a new label on the outside, which he'll be able to pick up, and, and you probably haven't seen yet. I don't think I have. Uh, you're just going to have to wait. Oh, man. <laughs> Once the video's done, I'll have to go check it out. <laughs> um, after it comes out of that, it goes down the front to the whole little ping pong section, plinko section. Then into a, a simple, the simple one wide stepper. Uh, and then we go into the loader for the monorail train. And uh, Ian has kind of outdone himself on the monorail train this year. We got three trains running, five stations, uh, a loader that's got a, a finger to clear jams. He's got a brick separator in there. Yes, that turns out to be a good poker finger to kind of loosen things up okay. and, and keep things flowing. Um, he, he had something like this last year. It wasn't working quite as well as it is now. This is a, a vast improvement on that stirring. Um, but the, the fact that we got three trains running uh, kind of keeps the, the throughput up there, even though this is a, a much larger track than he's ever done before. 
So um, this is a very nice design. I, I like this setup. Out of all the monorails I think I've seen with used in GBC, this is probably m the best one, mm -hmm. I think. I think. Um, from there, we dump into Bill Bourne's Memorial Baldozer, um, which is uh, a, a, a favorite of the kids because they get to drive the, the bulldozer around uh, and push balls into the ball pump, which then starts the cycle all over again. Right. So it's been, um, you know, I, I, ha I don't think we've done an official count yet. And um, I see I have a Hassan plug substitute out there. <laughs> <laughs> the trolls have shown up. The, the trolls are, yes, the trolls in purple. Um, so it's been an interesting year uh, since we were back here last year. We've grown amazing for Virginia. The, Virginia just saw really? a huge growth spurt. Uh, we went up by, I think, four tables from last year, and uh, and a, a good chunk of my modules are still under the table. Okay. Um, we have a lot of spares. I told Todd last night I could have filled four more tables easy. Um, we did a rough count um, last night before we tried to turn anything on, and we had roughly 200 modules. And I have not done an official count. I'll probably do that now so I can say this is the number. Um, I don't have a Jeremy come along and whispering it in my ear <laughs> like we did at Brickworld. Uh, this is not going to be a world's record, but it is most certainly a East Coast record and a Brick Fair record. Okay. Uh, we've never had anywhere close to 200 modules. Um, so I, it, this is another awesome GBC. A lot of things have worked quite well, things that I was a little concerned about turned out to work great. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I don't know what more there is to it's say. Just, it's always a fun time walking around. Thanks once again for showing us around the whole thing. It's, it takes a while. I don't know how long this video will end up, but I think everyone enjoys seeing uh, all of the modules running and getting all that insight. Uh, you always do an excellent job giving the commentary, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, you know, we try to do this. We do this at the end of the day for a couple of reasons. One, the public thins out and actually they're gone now. Um, the public thins out. Uh, this is our first day of public. All a lot of the bugs have been worked out of the whole loop, but invariably I'm exhausted at this point of the day. So I did notice I, when I first saw the Chicago video, uh, this latest one. The first thing I saw was, "Oh my God, I look so tired," <laughs> and I'm sure I will come across that way on this video too. Uh, but it's. It's fun. It's always fun. It's always a lot of work. And um, after we shut the camera off, I'm going to sit. That's a good idea. Well, we appreciate the work you and everyone else on the, at the GBC put into it. And I think everyone appreciates, you know, the work you put in doing the commentary and showing us around. So thank you so much, Tom. Can't wait to see uh, whatever setup you have next. <laughs> thank you very much.